So, welcome back. Jetzt geht es richtig ins Detail, so in die Pitches. Jetzt darf ich die, das erste, die erste Pitch-Gruppe darf ich auf die Bühne bitten von Eichstätt, Ingolstadt, Sciences Po Rennes. Yeah, die freuen sich schon. Wartet mal ab. Und die Experten bitte auch. Christian Schäffer, Katharina van Delden, Netra Gauda, ann katrin Riedel und Alexander Pretschner bitte auch auf die Bühne kommen. Und Pardon? Ah, oh, yes, I have to switch to English now. Oh, my God. I'm more into French, you know. <laughs> well, so, uh, but everybody understood what I was saying. So, is everybody on stage <laughs> now? I guess so. The experts? Yeah. Another one. Welcome. And this is the pitch group. So, you're gonna pitch them to the moon. <laughs> Here we go. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for having us. We are four students of political science in a uh, French and German double degree, and we would like to take a more policy-based approach on European digital sovereignty. Um, firstly, an essential necessity for maintaining and strengthening digital sovereignty is uh, that Europe becomes an environment that is more innovation-friendly. Um, and although the number of unicorns in Europe has increased, European startups uh, are still behind. They uh, raise uh, less money, they are fewer in number, and they have a lower likelihood of success. Uh, the main issues are that Europe is a fragmented market. There's no innovation uh, super hubs that are densely packed with resources. Uh, large funding rounds can be challenging for European startups and cultural values play an important role. Um, European startups face much greater pressure to perform uh, better and earlier. And so we think that Europe should become a more innovation-friendly environment by investing Europe's assets into growing the startup ecosystem, by reducing regulatory framework, which we spoke about before, and by considering to allocate more semi-public funds to the growth of the ecosystem, and by fostering uh, collaborations between ventures, academia, and industry. One key aspect of uh, digital sovereignty is the infrastructure, especially the chip production. As Ursula von der Leyen has said, there is no digital without chips and neither there will be European sovereignty without them. Today the EU has a 10% share in world's microchips production. Due to the CHIP Act, 43 billion euros will be spent in public investment until 2030. Comparatively, the Americans are spending 52 billion up to 2026. Um, according to the Commission, this should increase the EU's share of the world market for chips production, thus doubling it. But on the other hand, China is investing, however, 150 billion euros until the end of the decade. So the CHIP Act is therefore a first necessary step, but needs to be deepened and expanded in the long term in order to keep up with the competitors and guarantee a European digital sovereignty. Another important matter is data protection. And when it comes to data protection, the general data protection regulation that was introduced by the European, by the European Union in 2016 is a first step. But its cookies proved mostly ineffective, and a lot of the base configuration often favored less data protection. And as, today, as of today, data is being mostly stored in US American and Chinese clouds. I think 70% of the clouds are there. And the American Cloud Act is still allowing the USA through their extraterritorial rights to gain access and use the data of European users. And that is clearly threatening the, sovereignty, the data sovereignty of European users. So the, there was an initial privacy shield project, but that was overturned by the European Court of Justice in 2020. And so that's why there still isn't a judicial framework to protect the data of European users. And therefore, we strongly believe that there is a need to try and find a judicial framework for it. And we also believe that we need common European clouds to protect and store data. And I believe that in this context, the aforementioned GAIA-X program is a good one. So to conclude what my fellow students just said, Europe should become a more innovation-friendly market that supports the creation of and the development of startups. 
um, and develop cooperation be between the academic and the, um, the industry world. We also strongly believe that the European Union needs a common roadmap to build a sovereign technological Europe. We need to develop the chips industry, but we also need to develop the IT services and data storage industry uh, in full respect of the European values and rules. And I think the most important here is uh, that we need a strong political willingness uh, to give the means to research and industry uh, in order to make better and faster. So that was our political standpoint on digital sovereignty. Thank you for listening and we are looking forward to discuss with us, with you. <laughs> So there's no moderator. <laughs> can we just? <laughs> can we just? <laughs> well, I was not proposed. I, I was not supposed to ask questions right now because, um, but it's okay. So you can now ask the questions to the pitch students. So I give you the microphone, and we have uh, you have the microphone. Okay, I'm also blind, obviously. <laughs> um, so you enter in interaction right now, please. So ask your questions; they hopefully will answer. Yes, you will. I guess. Here we go. So thanks very much. That's very very interesting. Also very very deep what you have told us. Um, thank thank you. I have two, two questions. One, one question is you seem to be focusing uh, on innovation ecosystems and innovation infrastructure. You said, okay, we need chips and we need IT services. Don't we need software as well and services that are not just related to IT? And why is it that, that you didn't focus on that? Because it seems that this really is what drives innovation. Um, I think there's several reasons. Firstly, obviously, we agree with you. Um, we have only a short time to pitch our ideas, so maybe we didn't go as deeply as you wanted. Uh, but when we're speaking about infrastructure and more innovation, I think we talk about the fact that uh, we don't have any like innovation hubs. We're very spread out. We have uh, Berlin, we have a bit of Stockholm, we have a bit of Paris, but we don't have these um, Silicon Valley-esque uh, areas. Yes, Munich. Yeah, no, <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, but I think that's what we're trying to focus on, that we need an ecosystem that um, cooperates closely together, and that's why we also uh, spoke about academia and industry working together. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, well, first of all, I agree that um, Europe is rather fragmented, and we don't really put our forces together to, to really try and get these startups off the ground. Um, having said that, also what you said on the judicial side, I understand this policy and framework that needs to be in place. But when we talk about cloud providers and really, as you mentioned, chips, is that really an area for a startup, do you think? Um, exactly like you mentioned, you know, it's billions and billions of dollars being invested because that's really fundamental infrastructure. Um, and as you rightly said, Europe is lagging behind, but do you think it's really the space for startups? Um, I think it's a mix of both. I think uh, it was mentioned before in the pitch that we have experts in Europe that know very well what they're doing in that field, but I also think that there is a need for innovation because once an expert has done his things, he um, doesn't have maybe the best ideas and innovations. So I think these corporations need to work closer together. But I agree, yeah. And also, if I can add something, it's digital sovereignty and uh, the coronavirus pandemic has showed us that we need to become independent to to really have to get this sovereignty. I mean, uh, the car producers can't produce their cars. One third, I think, something like that. Uh, the car producers were not able to produce them because there were no chips. And so this has an impact also on, on different levels in the industry and especially the startups. Well, I'm a founder myself. I founded a software company. 
and especially software company that deals with innovation um, and innovation management software company. So basically the first point you're raising hits home with me. <laughs> it's, um, not only you know, thinking of the importance of uh, entrepreneurship and, and the foundation of companies, but especially thinking about innovation ecosystems and doing so in collaboration. Um, so actually, uh, coming from that, I do have two questions. And the first one, does any of you four consider founding a startup? No. <laughs> no, because we study political science, so we're maybe not as close to that field, I think. Well, nothing is impossible now. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the point I want to raise, you know, I, because I believe there is no field that is distant to founding a startup. You know, it could, maybe you found the breakthrough idea in the field of political science to found a startup. So my concrete idea would be, what is keeping you today to consider that option? And what should be part of that innovation ecosystem that you're talking about that people like you for say, well, yes, I also want to found a startup? Yeah, um, I think that's uh, what I briefly mentioned. I think there's a lack of risk culture in Europe, especially in Germany. Um, and students are maybe less enticed to start a startup because of fear to not succeed or uh, that there's a very high expectation to succeed very early on. Um, I also think that the European startup market is uh, difficult to access because I think, if I remember correctly, 36% of startups in general are European, but only 14% of unicorns. So at a one point they sort of start to stall and there's no more funding. And so it's very hard for European startups to kind of uh, pass this first uh, phase and then become very uh, big. Um, but to sort of come back to your question, I think there's really this lack of, of, of risk culture. And I think uh, we could maybe counteract this with more uh, presence in schools and universities. I think we have a very um, research uh, approach on our universities. Um, maybe in France it's a bit less uh, research-centered, it's a bit more open, but I think maybe we should uh, have a more risk uh, friendly culture in our universities and yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, in case one of you four does decide to fund a startup in the future and you have concerns about the risks, um, reach out to me on LinkedIn or whatever and we have a chat. <laughs> I'll convince you that it's a good option. Okay, will. <laughs> but I think, I think risk is a, good, uh, is a good point also when I look at your overall proposal because um, in a way you offer high level observations which I think are really good and general ideas. But um, uh, I'd be interested in um, what you think really is the next step. So what is, uh, what is it uh, that, uh, from all that we heard from you, what is the next step that is the most important? This would be my, my first limp. And then I felt a slight tension because uh, in the beginning you said um, we need to deregulate uh, in order to increase that. But I think the third speaker then said we, uh, we need a judicial framework um, concerning uh, data protection. So maybe also uh, take some risk in this field and really tell us what do you want to deregulate, what should be done really, yeah? what's, what's the next step? Yes, so I can maybe slightly go into that. I was, uh, when, I, when I was saying that, it was mainly a framework trying to protect uh, the, the, the data and the hum, hum, human side of it, but not a part that was trying to complete, uh, to block off data and make it completely impossible to create anything uh, with data. I think we had a lot of, uh, in, the, in the discussion session before, we had a lot of people who were also stressing that point that it is important to have a, a the, 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 to keep the, the, the European value side, to keep data as protected, like we see that in Europe, like uh, we have that way to see that in Europe, but we still have to keep it open enough to be able to uh, have it, well, the deregulation the part that was uh, needed to have more uh, startups and these things. That's a very important step you just made because now you shift from deregulation and the judicial framework to good regulation. So how do we actually do it well? And that's maybe also the point you need to um, you need to address. What is good regulation, and um, what would be uh, one or two examples to really um, uh, to really make things easier, but keep the same level of protection that we actually 
that we actually want. And uh, just because we are in the America House, um, the European Commission has a law very similar um, to the Cloud Act in the pipeline. So uh, not everything that we uh, that we read is is unheard of in Europe. And in many cases, we have kind of kind of the same discussions. But yeah, that, that would be for me the next step. Of course, you did a great job already. The next step to really show, okay, what is the what is it that we uh, that we can improve? But thank you very much. If I may add a last question, uh, thank you um, for your presentation. And um, you mentioned that there is a lag between the cooperation of academia and the economy. So, and as you uh, said, uh, that you don't want to found a startup. So, um, where do you see um, this this lack of support or cooperation? Um, what what can be done to to support uh, this cooperation between academia and economy? I don't think it's a lack. I think we just need more of it. I think we have quite a lot of corporations. We have things like this today. We have events that are organized by universities that bring uh, companies closer to maybe uh, potential uh, startuppers. Um, but I think there has to be a more uh, close cooperation. So generally, I think these are very momentarily. Uh, it's a presentation like this one today. Maybe people get informed, they do an internship, but the real like uh, entrepreneurial spirit, um, I think, lacks a little bit in uh, in Germany. I think we have many startups. I'm not criticizing the whole <laughs> startup scene, but I think it just needs more. And I just need. I think it just needs. Um, more innovation, more cooperation, a tighter cooperation, more trust in students. Because um, we all know that when we say we've done an internship, it's, it's, it, can be, it can be a very close internship and it can be very um, informative for everybody. We can learn a lot, but we can also do internships in big companies and it doesn't do anything apart from uh, teach us that we're the lowest uh, in the company and that it's very hard to get to the top. So I think uh, trusting students and and kind of giving them the chance to implement their ideas like today for example is a good way I don't think it there is no cooperations I think they just need to be more and they just need to be more quality like qualitative I don't know more quality <laughs> yeah. I think that also depends on the subject that you're talking yes. about right so I'm from software engineering uh, yes obviously. there's a lot of and I mean most engineering disciplines will have plenty of, of interactions yeah. with industry for political yeah. science maybe that's not the case yeah I mean, I can only speak for uh, what I know, not yeah. every sector, obviously, yeah. Trusting students is always nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. This is Eichstätt, um, Ingolstadt, and Sciences Po Rennes.